What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden, at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? Yeah, little guy. What up? Who's this? This lockout man. What's going on, man? Talk to me, bro. What's going on with you? Hey, nothing too much, man. You on air right now, so I'm just giving you a call because I seen your video. Uh, talking about what okay. good, saw, you know, talking about the good things you guys got going on over at RST. So, uh, after watching okay. your, after watching your video, I thought I'd give you, uh, give you a mate to call shout out. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Now hold on. Like I said in the video, you know, we got, you know, all of our trucks are, are all brand new. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the oldest truck in our fleet is like a 2018 Volvo. I think that's how that's how the oldest truck in our fleet. Okay. Um, we give we give the opportunity for drivers to actually make money and enjoy driving in mm -hmm. a lease program. Okay. Um, we kind of modeled our program after Prime's program, but we tweaked it a little bit. You know, where there's more there's more um, you know availability as far as where the driver wants to go like for instance the driver could code the truck to work let's just say like let's say he wanted to run the southeast region mm -hmm. he could run just the southeast region if he wants to now don't and as we all know as an over-the-road driver you're going to make your most money by being available to drive anywhere okay. but we have the options available you know to where if you don't want to run the northwest or you don't want to run out west or or what have you what about what you know, about you can pick and choose your what, routes what so what speak. about north what about northeast we if we don't want to go up in the northeast do do we got the choice of not going up there or are we forced dispatch to go up there yeah, you have you have the availability and the options to not go wherever the hell you want to go but you got to remember that's going to hinder your progress you know, your mm. full potential to make the most amount of money because, you know, if you've been out there, you know, driving the country, you know that no matter where you go, whether mm. it's the East Coast or the West Coast, the North, the South, people drive like crap everywhere. Right. You know, traffic is everywhere. Tolls are everywhere, for you know, for the most part. Um, you know, you have your pros and cons to the West Coast versus the East Coast, you know, so... From my perspective, as a driver that's done it all, you know, the whole country back and forth many times, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't recommend someone say, yeah, you know, hey, I, I don't want to drive the Northeast or the Northwest or, you know, because you're only going to, you're going to, you're going to hinder yourself from potentially making money. Like I remember one time I told my dispatcher, I was like, yo, I don't want to go to the Northwest. I don't want to go out to the Northwest this winter. Right. And he was like, okay, cool. Like a week, a week went by. He's like, "Hey, man, I know you don't want to go up there, but I got a load that's paying this amount of money to go up there." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, you <laughs> can't, you can't turn, turn it down. down. You can't turn it down." All right, you all know, right, all but, right. But the cool thing about the cool thing about our program, for instance, you know how out in, out in the west during the winter months they require you to carry chains, right? Right. Yeah, that's up in the uh, up so, in Utah, uh, uh, Colorado. Yeah, yeah, all the, yeah, and, the chain yeah. states. But the cool thing about but the cool thing about our program is is that, and even Prime's program, is if the weather is that bad to where the chain lights are lit, you don't have to go. You don't have to throw the chain. Okay. They don't require you to throw the chain. Okay. Okay. I've been driving a truck for 10 years, and I've never thrown chains once. Lucky you. I've been driving for seven, and I did it twice already. <laughs> uh, God bless you. Yeah, God I know, you. right? I know. You, All right, so, so little guy, there's man. Been, how there's been plenty of times where, like, I was, I was like, even wind. We had, I was, I had to, I had to go up and over uh, 25 and into Montana and all that stuff because the 80 was closed, you right. know, like it always is in the winter. Right. And I had to pull over and stop because the wind was pushing the trailer across the road. I, had, I called up dispatch and I said, hey, look, it's too dangerous out here. I'm shutting it down. Exactly. And they, they don't mind. They, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, well, we need to get that load there. No, what they'll do is they'll just reschedule the load due to safety reasons. You know, they're not going to force you to do anything you don't feel safe doing. Okay, okay. 
So, little guy, man, how how much experience uh, RST is looking for? You got to have a minimum of two years of experience, uh, verifiable, Mm -hmm. and you can't have any more than two moving violations within a two-year period. Okay. So, you got to have a pretty clean driving record. All right. And background check and all that other good stuff. Now, this now, do you guys now? I know we're talking about leasing over here, but do you guys have any uh, company options, company driver options? Yes, we do. We do. We're 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 toying around with uh, putting together, you know, fifty five cent all miles to uh, a company driver with seventy five percent of the benefits paid. Okay. Okay. Now, let me ask you this, and I, I ask, uh, you know, I'm beginning to ask every carrier this now because a lot of, you know, a lot of drivers in my network are finding it difficult to, you know, even when they come and get their CDLs and even if they have their, you know, years of experience in, but they're coming across uh, places now that's having some strict uh, strict hiring standards. How How strict is... RST standards of, uh, you know, looking at a driver's background to, b- to bring him in? You know, I'll be honest with you. You know, if, if a driver has um, anything drug-related, mm. um, that dr- felony drug-related stuff, mm. then our insurance company is not going to mess with them. But, you know, it, it, but it, it's a case-by-case situation, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but anything like high up on the totem pole as far as felony drug possession, stuff like that, you know, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a problem, you know, with almost any carrier nowadays, because like you said, the standards have gone up, you know? Right, right, right. Uh, pre-employment drug testing, bro. How, uh, hair follicles or, or urine or both? Just urine. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as the mileage pay, you 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 mentioned fifty five cent all miles for company drivers, uh, but for the lease program, I think that's what you push in more. What, what we're looking at as far as lease is it percentage or is it cent per mile? How how that's going to work out? Yeah, it's 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 percentage based, and and I can tell you from my own experience, you know, back in. 2017, when I first came here, I started out as a company driver because I really didn't know anything about how to be a lease driver. So I was mm-hmm. like, let me just be company. Let me, let me, you know, this, that, the third. And then I started seeing, you know, the money that I was missing out on. And I was like, well, I'm doing everything the same way. Might as well be a lease driver and make double the money. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all about how you run your truck, you know, because as a lease driver, you're the captain of your own ship. So it's up to you if you want to make the money or not. As a company driver, you kind of got to go and do what the dispatch tells you to do. Mm-hmm. But with a lease driver, you know, you have the options to say, no, you know what? I know I got hours today, but I'm exhausted. I'm going to take the rest of the day off, set my PTA for first thing in the morning. And the cool thing about uh, being leased, you know, it's percentage based, like we said. So, you know, in a nutshell, the way it works is the driver, our drivers get 80% of the revenue and the other 20% goes to primes trailers and their dispatchers and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way I can break it down to you. Um, And on average right now for our fleet, um, the entire fleet is seeing upwards of 275 to 350 a mile on Mm -hmm. all loads. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some loads here and there that, you know, you have, you have, you have those loads where like you're in a crappy area you know, you got to take a crappy load to get out of that crappy area. But on right. average, across the board, our drivers are bringing home well over three thousand dollars take home in their pocket every week. Okay, that sounds pretty good right there for uh, for leasing. Now, hey, now, little guy, I uh, of course I've been following you for you know for quite a while, bro. So you know, guys, go make sure y'all check out the little guy show. He got some interesting content. Uh, a lot of good content <laughs> from start to finish. So I'll, yeah, I mean, you know, you I'll, I'll, my I'll, channel, I'll my give you first that video. My first video started day one of truck driving school 10 years ago. So exactly everything that's on my channel from day, I mean, my whole career is there. Still, yeah, exactly. every single video is still up. So exactly. So what are the, uh, what are the trucks, uh, what are the trucks governing that? Uh, all the trucks are governed at the same thing like Prime. There's 68 on the cruise and 65 on the treadle. 
And, you know, uh, we used to be at 70, 75, but the problem is, is that, you know, the cost of fuel went up Mm -hmm. and a lot of drivers, like even myself, you know, it took me a long time to learn how to just back off the pedal a little bit, you know, and trainer James, you know, he works with us as well. And if you remember, he was my trainer at work. That's why we called him trainer James. But, mm-hmm. you know, he was telling me, he's like, bro, you got to slow down. You got to slow down. You got to just do the 65. And I'm like, yeah, but I can make it there so much faster. Uh, but long story short, you know, I did, I tested the theory, you know, I was running Amazon loads for, you know, a block load. If you know anything about Amazon, the block run, mm-hmm. basically it's the same, same run every week for three weeks or however many weeks you sign up for that particular run. Well, anyway, the run went from Houston to Dallas, Dallas to Oklahoma City, and then Oklahoma City out to Phoenix and then back. Mm-hmm. I did that for a week. And the first week I did it balls to the wall. I went as fast as I could, and I wrote down my numbers and how fast it took me to get from point A to point B. Second week I did 70. The third week I did 65. And at the at, after tallying up all the numbers, I saved – almost $700 in fuel. And I only lost about maybe 40 minutes total time by going slower. Mm. So uh, the amount of money that I saved in fuel and for the time offset for going slower, it didn't justify me going fast. So the, and the way, the way dispatch works over here is, um, you know, dispatch isn't going to give you a load that you can't get there uh, Mm. on time for your speed. They're going to, you know, make sure that you can get there, you know, and they know your truck can only go 65 miles an hour. So everything gets built into the, the pre-plan like that. So, okay. Now, um, now being the being least able to go fast oh. is great. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it's just not worth it. You know, it's just, at the end of the day, you're going to save so much more money in fuel. So All right. that's what, that's why the trucks are governed like that. All right. So being the least driver, are we able to pick our own loads off a low board or is it dispatched to us? It's dispatched to you, but it's it's not even like I said before. You don't have to. You you could you could turn the load down and say no. I don't want I don't want to go that way. Let's look for a load going. Like I remember one time uh, we had a snowstorm coming into Jersey, and I was at at the house in Pennsylvania, and they're like, "Hey, we got a load going to Jersey." I'm like, "Nope, I ain't going to Jersey." They're like, "Why not?" I'm like, "Do you see that storm coming?" So I'm like, "I'm not going to Jersey. Let's go the other way." And, uh, you know, I had to wait a few minutes for them to find me on the load, you know, but uh, I didn't go that way because I didn't want to be stuck in the snowstorm. Right. So you don't have to take every load they give you, you know. And, like, I asked my, I asked Chris, the owner of our company, when I first started leasing, I was like, what's the trick to this dispatch lease game, you know? He's like, take every load they give you. And I says, why? Explain it to me so I can understand it. Prime A fleet dispatchers are paid commission-based only they're not paying a salary so mm. when the driver makes money the dispatcher makes money so um it's not like you know the old the old saying oh man that dispatcher gave me this load this crappy load uh, it's not no that's not the way it works when you know with the a fleet you know a regular prime driver maybe yeah because regular prime dispatchers i believe they are paid a salary and then they're paid commission you know on each load, but with the A fleet, the dispatchers are paid commission based only. So um, the dispatcher wants to make sure that all of his drivers are making as much money as possible. You know, so but um, so by the yeah, sounds you know, of you it, can, you can say like for instance. So by the sounds of it, is by the sounds of it that it's beneficial for the dispatcher to find you a good paying load anyway, because if he gets a good if he gets you a good paying load, nine times out of ten, he's gonna get paid good off that as well. Exactly, exactly. And the cool thing about, you know, the 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 freedom that we have, like for instance, I don't know if you remember the video that I did with my son, Lucas, when I took him out on the road with me for a couple of weeks in the summer a couple of years ago. I called up Dylan, I said, Look, I'm coming out from home time. I gotta have my son with me. This is what I'm looking to do. Let me know if you can make it happen. I told him I want to go down south to Texas. I want to go across to Vegas, into California. I want to go up north and then come back across and go to Pennsylvania to take him home. Okay. And one thing I can tell you about our dispatcher, his name is Dylan. He's a really good guy. If you earn your stripes with this guy and you do what he asks you to do and you don't give him a hard time and you get your loads delivered on time, 
they'll bend over backwards for you, you know, and, and make things like that happen for you. Um, and it really comes down to just, like I said, that video, it's all about how you drive and how professional you are and, okay. and how you get the job done. Because so that's one of the key things, you know, like I tell everybody, if you can get getting good with dispatch and, you know, do the job that we're asking you to do, then anything's possible. There you it go. It becomes easy and it becomes fun to drive. You know? What? What about driver cams in the trucks? Uh, we only have outward facing dash cams that are attached to the windshield. So All that right. way, God forbid you're in a wreck, we got footage that can save your butt, you know. There you go. Uh, we do not have any inward facing cameras. We don't we don't play that we're not we're not all about that inward facing. What a, what about amenities? Stuff. I don't I'm not a fan. What type of amenities that you guys offer in the trucks? All of our trucks come standard with EPUs or APUs, depending on the truck. Um, all the trucks have inverters in them up to 2,000 watts. All the trucks have refrigerators. All the trucks come with Sirius XM uh, satellite radio. Um, there's, if you've seen any of the videos that I've done on our, you know, the walkthrough tours of our truck, mm -hmm. hell, even Trader James just did a video on the Alaska spec Volvo um, that he just got the other day. And I posted it up on the RST Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You know, all of our trucks come well equipped with all the amenities like leather, you know, seats, heated and cooled seats, you know, comfort stuff, you know, all the safety features, power windows, power mirrors, uh, defrosters on the mirrors. I mean, all, all that, all the bells and whistles, basically, you know? Okay, okay. What about now? We're gonna circle the back to are, the trucks are. Oh, we we're gonna circle back to uh to the leasing. So, how much is the trucks per week? Right now, we have all of our trucks pretty much set the same. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, at the end of the day, your fixed cost with us is about eighteen to nineteen hundred dollars a week. That includes your truck payment, your insurance your fees and all that other stuff for your permits and everything. It's all wrapped up into one big, you know, one big thing. And it breaks it down. I mean, if you really wanted to break it down into each thing, truck payments are around nine twenty five to nine fifty a week. Insurance is around five fifty. And then we have what's called the RSP fee. And that covers your plates, your IFSA, your uh, permits. And all the other, you know, knickknacks that got to go with the truck, like your easy passes and all that other stuff. So, okay, okay. Because we right. have that too. We have trucks come, the trucks come with easy pass, uh, the Oklahoma and uh, Kansas tolls, and uh, anywhere there's tolls, you know, it's we covered. have a pass for. You know, okay. So, for everywhere. So, okay. Uh, uh, free passes are in the truck, obviously, mm -hmm. way stations. Okay, 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 okay. So with the leasing, uh, as you mentioned in your in your video, this is this is a walkaway lease, but it's not uh, it's not the type of lease that uh, that requires a balloon payment. Once once the lease is up and the money's paid in, the truck is yours out the door, right? Yeah, if you decide to go lease purchase, quote unquote, and you want to buy the truck, then yeah, there's no credit check, there's no down payment. There's, uh, you know, no balloon payment at the end. There's no fine print. It really is that simple. Uh, we've all heard the stories of other companies where they, you know, they make you do a balloon payment. Right. And they, you know, have all this fine print. And then, you know, once the truck is paid off, the truck is paid off. If you want to buy it, it's yours. It's that simple, you know. Okay. Um, even as a regular lease driver, you still have the freedom to do, you know, some stuff to the truck. You can put your own decals and stuff on it. Like I used to have on my truck. You know, so it's not like you're just driving a quote unquote company vehicle. You know, you can make it your own, you know. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Pet and rider policy and how young can I bring my rider? You could bring your, your baby out there if you want to. I mean, uh, <laughs> we don't recommend it, but uh, we've seen people do it. Um, and uh, but I, I recommend anything 10 and older, you're golden. You know, my son was nine when he came with me, and he was fine, you right. know. But, um, you know, we, we've got guys that have their wives out there with them. They have their kids with them. You know, they um, – They hold family. You know, the summertime, they take the whole thing. 
you know, take the whole. Sometimes you take the whole family out in the truck, and you know, you tell tell dispatch, "Hey, I'm gonna have my family with me. I want you to route me to wherever, and we're gonna go on vacation out there." You know, right. what I'm saying that way you can, you know, you know, work your way across the country and take your family on vacation if that's what you wanted to do. So, uh, okay, okay. Well, listen, little guy, man. We got pet policy too. Listen, little guy, man. Thank you very much. I I do appreciate it, guys. This is. Little guy from the Little Guy Show representing RST. If you guys are interested in RST, I will have the information in the description below. You guys can also go over to the Little Guy channel and uh, make sure y'all, you know, subscribe to him and all like that. Listen, I got a, I got a couple of more questions for you, and then I know you're a busy man, so I do appreciate you taking the time, bro. Um, do you guys accept SAP drivers? Say that one more time. What was the question? I said, do you guys accept SAP drivers from the FMCSA uh, clearinghouse? SAP? What's, what's a SAP driver? Refresh my memory. I'm having a brain fart. Uh, SAP, <laughs> SAP drivers are the drivers that, you know, if if they flunk the, or if they, you know, test, ne uh, I'm sorry, positive. If they test positive and they get put in the FMCSA's clearinghouse, they got to go through a SAP program. Oh, that stuff. Yeah, no. no yeah. Yeah. They, if, if, you, if, you fail, if you fail a drug test, and, and I, unfortunately, I can't mess with you. You know, so you know, that's why, you know, like we, us as truck drivers with our CDLs out here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, uh, we, we, we protect it. You know, gotcha. Dude, I remember when I was in the military, it was, it was the same thing in the military. You know, you couldn't, there were certain things you just could not, mess around with and uh you know unfortunately drugs and alcohol are just as strict um in the trucking industry as they are in the military so that's unfortunately I, the insurance company and that's not that's not my choice or chris's choice you know that's just our insurance company you know mm -hmm. they just they do not want to uh take a chance on something like that so all right all right sign on bonus over there anything no no sign-on bonuses, and the reason we don't have those sign-on bonuses is because we know you're going to make money over here, and we don't need to put any fluff or or frills in our marketing or our you know recruiting, advertising, whatever you want to call it, to uh, make it sound bright and shiny over here. It is bright and shiny over here. All you got to do is take a look at our trucks, take a look at our drivers. They all got smiles on their faces, and they all got money in their pocket. So I don't need to do no uh bonuses to uh excite you to come over here all you got to do is make the call and set it up and, and want to be here and we can do and we can go from there i'd rather you call me up and be a pain in my butt and say hey little guy what's going on my application hey little guy when are the trucks going to be available so that shows me that you're hungry that you want to be here you know what i'm saying so we don't need we've never done a bonus program uh because we don't need to because our, you know if you follow the guidelines and the and the um, the advice that we give you to succeed, you're going to succeed. It's that simple. All right. All right. Well, little guy, thank you once again, man, for uh, for uh, representing RST and giving us the good information uh, that you guys got going on over there. I really do appreciate it. Again, guys, make sure y'all go and follow my guy, you know, little guy show. And if you are interested again, uh, for RST, it will be in the description below. And uh, and little guy, I, I appreciate the time, bro. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Hey, do me a favor when you get this ready to uh, go to live, shoot me a link to it so I can share it out for you. I will certainly do that, man. I will certainly do that. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Don't you love me all night?